I'm going to put this out to be wary where you park your bike, but this is one thing I take in my um, saddlebags all the time. And I know it's not a, you see it's a long cable like that. One time, long time ago, I think it was a 97 or 98, I was parked in the uh, a Winter Park corporate suite office on Cimarron Boulevard. And there was a bunch of bikes parked there, all parked together. And I happened to have this thing. And it was wrapped around one of the light poles for the parking lot. Well, one day, somebody came by with a truck and grabbed every single bike except for mine. Needless to say, after that, I, I stopped riding to work, you know, um, because of that incident. But I always like to, um, when I go in a store, actually, I'm kind of squeamish, I like to see, you know, be able to look out the window frequently, see where the bike is parked. It's one thing I don't like about riding, it's kind of gotten me out of it too, because of, um, you know, one thing is the, is the recreational pose, but uh, if you're looking over in Asia, in Japan, that's where I actually learned how to ride. Um, close to 60% of them, I think in Taiwan, I think 70% of them have motorcycles. Here it's a recreational thing, it's like 5% and a lot of them don't ride much. I haven't been riding much, but I plan to be riding more, but uh, I wanted to point out, this is this cable. The beauty of it is it's kind of long. See how you can loop it around like that? So you can get this around something really big. Now, I do have a chain right here. and it's uh, But no matter what you get, you know, it's a chain wrapped in this stuff. It's for motorcycles. It's really tough to cut. But no matter what you get, you know, anybody spends 10, 15 minutes with a cutoff wheel, they can cut through that chain. So, uh, I... You know, you just got to be careful where you park. I'll tell you a little story, though. I remember, I used to subscribe to Iron Horse Magazine. That was back in the 80s. They were like the East Coast answer to, um, what do you call them, guys? Again, Easy Riders, right, on the West Coast, California. These are out of New York City, mainly. Um, I forgot the guy's first name. His last name was Snow. He had like a, a shovel head. I think it was a 78. And he used to park it in New York outside. I think it was in Brooklyn. He had it under a street light, right from right outside his apartment. And he put like I don't know, like 12 chains on this thing with a cover. And he used to ride it pre pretty much every day, all kinds of weather. True hardcore biker. Um, the best thing is if you park a bike is to make sure it's not you know at home. Make sure it's not visible from the street. You know, where to just grab it, even if it's under a carport. I was keeping this under the carport, but now I got it back in. I don't know if you can see this back here, but got it back in there. You can't see it. You know, you got to back it out. So, but, plan of doing more work on it stuff, but uh, always afraid where I park it. It's like, I want to use it like a vehicle. So that means usually you're going to work or you're going to a store or you're going to some place where you got to park the bike. You know, just riding around ain't no problem. You ain't worried about security. But uh, this is one thing. Uh, this thing did save my whole bike one time. And uh, um, back, I think it was in 92 or I think it was 1992, I had the engine done over in San Marcos, California by, I think it was Mike Dreen. I don't know where this guy is now, but he was like the only one between L.A. and San Diego that was doing these, any of these, this type of real heavy-duty work where they balanced the flywheels and put in like S&S lowers and stuff. I got the S&S connecting rods, not the flywheels. But, uh, you know, it was a lot of money. I mean, today it would probably be six, seven thousand dollars $7,000, and I'd pull the engine out myself and gave it to him, too. So, I mean, it wasn't cheap. So... And the bike don't look like nothing, but I really couldn't replace this bike very easily with what it's got inside the engine. So, um, you know, the thing I like about Harley, like I'm going off here a little longer, but um, they always have some kind of shortcomings, but the aftermarket always addresses those shortcomings. And they're never really that bad, you know. I mean, it's pretty rare that there's actually the company made a really bad bike, you know, it's just that. They, there's always a, one or two things in there that need to be addressed. This one has that issues too, but pretty much address that stuff. But uh, make sure, see this is actually, it's not designed, it 
It's kryptonite, right? Crypto Flex. It's a cable lock for bicycles. But it's good enough that if they're going to do a snatch and grab, the cables are kind of hard. To, you can cut them with the ball cutters, but they're not that easy to cut with the ball cutters. Actually, you're, sometimes the chains are easier. To, the, chain, the, the cables seem to flex. So they would, you know, they would go on to something easier. So more than likely. You know, I just want to point that out to me. This is like um, this always goes in my saddlebag, and uh, you know I don't try to use a, a bungee cord to keep it you know wound together. I just use a regular quarter inch piece of rope because the bungee cords always break after a while and they give you problems. Just to so wrap it up. Oh, so, you know I say wrap it up and just you shove it in here. So a lot of times. Um, with this saddlebag too. If I'm taking something out of it a lot, I don't even freaking mess with doing the front thing on it, but sort of just leave it real loose. I just had my, uh, what you call it out of there, rain suit out of there too. That's why I get going in there. Push in there when you got two hands. So, uh, <laughs> anyway, you don't need to spend a lot of money on these bikes, but I'll tell you, when you buy parts, it's better off looking at the aftermarket and, um, getting something that's better than Harley Davidson. Look around on the forums, you'll find like usually you can't go wrong with S and S parts or something like that. They make the uh, connecting rods, they make the valves, lifters, push rods, good carburetors. And Coney's probably a better carburetor though, but anyway. And Andrews makes really good gears. I like to put a few of those gears in there too. But anyway, over now. Yes the beast does run good. Fire when it gets warmed up. <laughs> 